Hey man, hey, real quick, man, I want brothers to clap it up for the elders out here, man. Right. Hey, clap it up for the elders out here, man. Hey, we got two of the elders out here, man. They've been coming out here with the young buck. Hey, they've been they be doing their thing, man. Hey, 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 Right, this how the elders supposed to be out here, man. Right, you got the elders, you got the elders in the world, right? They trying to teach you how to scale. Right, they trying to teach you how to roll the biggest blunt up. Hey, 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 grandson, let me show you how to roll this blunt up. He, he, he putting it to his mouth, he licking the blunt, right? But we got, we got, hey, we got elders out here that's keeping these commandments. And that's very rare to have in this truth, man. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 5 and verse 17. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. Especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. Right, yeah, man. So yeah. it's double honor to these elders out here, man. These elders out here that been with us out here since the beginning. They coming out here when it's cold. They come out here when it's hot, right? And they stand. They been. They been uh, consistent with the, with serving the Most High God. Hey, sister. Hey, sis. Sis with the hood, with the coat, with the boots, with the walking stove. Y'all got two minutes. You got two minutes for the Bible. All right. Right, so we are here to let our people know that we the Israelites according to the Bible, man. Right, right. We God's chosen people, right. and we gotta re we gotta repent in these last days as being the Israelites according to the Bible. Right. We ain't black, we ain't African American, we ain't Negroes, we ain't colored, we none of these things. We are the biblical oh. Israelites according to the Bible. Oh. Right, give me the book of uh, Proverbs 29. Right, give me uh, Romans 13. Right, cause we're in the last days, man. Right. And destruction is coming to America. Right. World War III is on the rise. Right? It's kicking up, man. Famine is coming to this place. You can, you see brothers holding signs up. Your wealth, your materialistic things can't save you in the day of the Lord. Bring it out. You can't give the Lord no amount of money to stop him from, from killing you. Right. You have to keep these laws, statutes, and commandments. Right. Proverbs 28, verse 9. Bring it out. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law. Even his prayers right, shall be abomination. Right, so the, hey, you have a lot of people that think they can do what they, they can do whatever they want to do, and the Lord hear their prayers. The Bible just said, if you turn your ear from hearing the law, if you turn your ear from hearing what the Bible says, He said your prayer will be an abomination. It'll be a it'll be a disgust. Right. It's like your prayers going up, He's swatting it down. Ooh. Right, that, that's how serious this is, man. Right. right, I was just reading this morning about the Maccabees, man. Ooh. Right, they died for not eating pork. How many people out here die out, for not eating pork? How many people out here would die for not eating pork, man? That's a serious matter. Right? Look you got the book of Romans, chapter 13 and verse 11. Is that no other time? That now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Right, so the most high God said it's high time to awake out of sleep. Okay. The Messiah is on his way back, right. right? We've been hearing this our whole life, Jesus coming back. Our grandma been telling us this, our uncle's been telling us this, but we reading these prophecies and we looking at the news and the times that we are, we comparing the news to the Bible, we seeing that we don't have that much time. Right. The Messiah, he's showing himself in the earth, man. Right. You have to pay attention to the sign. He's showing himself through the earthquake. He's showing Ooh. himself through the tornado. He's showing himself through the families that's going on around the world. Right. So we have to pay attention to these things. You got end time headlines, right? You got these whistleblowers out here showing you what's going on behind the scenes. We got to pay attention to these things, man. Hey, nope. since you got two minutes for the words for, for the words of God. You got two minutes for the words of God, sister. Yeah. Sister with the man. Yeah, you say. Sister with the man. <laughs> the book of second entrance, chapter six and verse 18. And it says, Behold, the days come that I will begin to draw nigh and to visit them that dwell upon the earth, and will begin to make inquisition of them, what they what what they be that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness, and when the affliction of Zion shall be fulfilled. Right, man. So the most high God is long suffering. A lot of our people think they got away with, 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 with the things they do. Right? A lot of our people think they got away with the with the robbing, with the stealing. With the scamming, a lot of our people think they got away with eating the pork. All right, I've been eating pork for 57 years, and I ain't nothing ain't happened to me. I'm still living, 
Right, they think they got away with that. Right. They, get, they think they got away from breaking the Sabbath day. Right. They ain't get away from that, man. You can't run from that. The Most High God says so he's going to catch up to you. Uh, right? Uh, he's going to visit you in that day. Right. right? Revelation chapter 18 and verse 1. Bring it out. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, yeah. having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. Has become the habitation of devils. Right, so the most the Bible said Babylon the Great is falling. America is falling. This is prophecy that the that, uh, was spoken about in Revelation by right. John. Right. 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 Y'all can come up, family. We hey, we just out here spreading the word. So, uh, y'all got y'all got a few minutes to hear about the Bible? Yeah. Okay, all praise to the most high. So have y'all ever heard of the Israelites? I know the brother said he have all praises. Um, come look at this sign right quick, brother. Y'all see y'all sit on this side? Y'all can come up. These are the 12 tribes of Israel. We know Jacob had 12 sons. Right. right? And um, Jacob's name was later changed to Israel. He had 12 sons, which make up the 12 tribes right. of Israel. So what we out here to do is to tell our people that we make up the 12 tribes of Israel. Right. right? Because we've been taught that we was all different things in the sense of Negroes, black, color, African American, we've been taught all these things, but we never was told that we were the children of Israel. Right. We never, we never were told that we descend from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right. So that's what we are here to let our people know. We also are here to let our people know um, how to get the kingdom of heaven and also prove that we are the Israelites because we could just be out, out here just telling you something, but we want to prove it to you out the Bible. Right. right. So can you give me um, Deuteronomy twenty? The book of Deuteronomy, chapter twenty-eight, and verse fifteen. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Right, so this is going into Deuteronomy where, when the Israelites were with Moses. And you know the Israelites made a covenant with Moses, or with the Most High God, right? And they, he gave them some commandments to keep. He like, if y'all don't keep my commandments, I'm going to punish y'all. But if y'all do keep my commandments, y'all gonna be blessed above you know, above all nations. But the Israelites, they didn't keep the commandments. They was into idolatry, they was into adultery, they kept, they were complaining to the, the Most High God. So he put a curse on the Israelites. So I'm gonna just show you a few of these curses to show you that it lines up with what we going through today. Give me six. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 16. Oh. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. Right, so the Bible said the Israelites, they gonna be cursed in the cities, and they also gonna be cursed in the fields. So this is something that's called prophecy. He spoke about this and it's happening as we see throughout time today. So what people would y'all say are cursed in any city y'all go to? They live the poorest. They in the hoods. Yeah. Who, what, what race of people that is? Us. That's us. Right. Yeah. Every, every race of people can't say that. Yeah. We can say that, we can say that yeah. for a fact that we are cursed in the city. What he said cursed in the city. Cursed shall I be in the city. And cursed shall thou be in the field. So he also said that we was gonna be cursed in the field. We also got, got a sign right here. I'll pray. The Bible yeah. said the Israelites they gonna be cursed in the field. Right, right. And it, it and it, it, it's crazy. This is how we know that we the Israelites because all throughout the Bible, Israel Israelites was going through slavery. Right. They always they always was getting punished by slavery. Oh. And it, is it a coincidence that we got punished by slavery too? And the Israelites been getting punished by slavery. You, you know that. what I'm saying? It, it's right. So right. Uh, give me uh. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given into another people, and thy eyes shall look and fail and longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thy hand. Right, so this is going, this is another curse that was going to happen to the Israelites. The Bible said, since y'all didn't keep my commandments, your sons and your daughters is going to be given to another people. Right, and that would happen during slavery. Our children was getting sent from different plantations. And we couldn't do nothing about it. He said our eyes is going to fail for them. And it's not going to be no weapon in our hand. We didn't have no gun to stop them from taking our children. We didn't have no knife. We just had to sit there while our children got on the boat and got sent to somewhere else. This is talking about us. This Bible is like our history book. You know, because our history, they try to erase our history. They try to hide everything about us. But we don't know that this Bible is talking to us. Right. The, the Bible is, he, he's, he's, he's putting a, a, a description on the Israelites and who they is today. Right. Give me a... Uh, Real quick, Deuteronomy 28 to 46. This is why he put these curses in the Bible. 
the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. Right, so the, the Bible said these curses that he put on us is supposed to be for a sign. So when we read this Bible, we read it and we're like, dang, this is a sign. This let me know that this our people. Because we relate to this. So this is why he did that, sis. So we the Israelites according to the Bible. That's right. And, okay. the, and now that we the Israelites, it's something that the, the Most High God require of us. I'm going to show you real quick. Give me uh, Deuteronomy 20, I mean uh, Deuteronomy 10 and 12. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. And now Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Verse 13, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. So he still required us do, to do the same thing he required us back then, to keep his commandments. Because if we keep his commandments, we are, we are automatically loving with all our heart and fear him. So do you know a few commandments, sis, that, you know, that um, we're supposed to keep, you know, a few of them? Okay, it's all good. Well, we got the 10. It's, it's, it's more than 10, but we got the 10 commandments. You know, we know the ones like, thou shalt have no other God uh, before you, honor your father, your mother, thou shalt not murder. We know a few of these. But let me show you, let me show, because the, the, the church sometimes, they, or the church tell you it's only 10 commandments. They don't even speak about the commandments, but we, we, we know it's only 10 commandments, that's what we see. But it's really more than 10 commandments. It's really actually like 600 some commandments that we're supposed to keep. And they're not hard to keep, but we just never taught them. We have never been taught them. So let me show you a few of them. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 7. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he it not the cud. He is unclean to you. So according to the Bible, it, it's a dietary law in the Bible. You know, he gave us certain foods that we can and cannot eat. Right. So he's getting, he said the swine. Y'all know what swine is? Y'all ever heard of swine? That pig, is that bacon, is that sausage, is that ham? The Bible said, and the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he chew it not the cud. He is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. Right, so the Bible said one animal that we're not supposed to eat is that pig, because it's, it's, it's unclean. It's a filthy, nasty animal. It's unhealthy. And we, we consume in that pig and we get sick. That's why we got, you know, certain things wrong with our body because we eat the pig, right? So that's one animal we can't eat. Verse nine, these shall you eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever has fins and scales in the waters, in the seas and in the rivers, them shall you eat. So God said, if we eat anything that come out the waters, it gotta have fins and scales. So what, what's one thing that our people love to eat that is? Yes. Well, what kind of fish? Um, uh, uh, what animals that don't have fins and scales that we like to eat that's in the water? At, 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 at seafood boards. Crabs? Crabs. It don't got fins and scales. Lobsters don't got fins and scales. Catfish only got, it got fins but it don't got scales. Because it, it's a reason. It's a reason why he, why he say for us not to eat these things. Because they bottom feeders. They bad for you. They eat everything at the bottom of the water. When you open up a shrimp, we open up crabs, there's always yellow stuff inside the crab. Right, right. They eating everything at the bottom of the water. They always at the bottom of the water because they was made to keep the water clean. That's we was right. never made to eat them. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, give me uh, give the book of uh, Exodus 28. Give me Have y'all ever heard of the Sabbath day? The Sabbath day? Uh. Right, and that's, the, that's the, actually the fourth commandment. And it's crazy because a lot of Christians, a lot of pastors don't teach about the Sabbath day. And they got their church keeping it on the wrong day. Right, we're, right. we're gonna show you what the right day is. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So the Bible said remember the Sabbath day because he knew it was gonna come a time that we was gonna forget it. Because when you go through different captivities of slavery, you your heritage get taken away. You forget who you was and where you come from. So he's saying now it's high time to remember. Remember the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Right, so the Bible said the Sabbath day is the seventh day of the week. So when is the seventh day of the week? Sunday. You said Sunday. That's what we've been taught. What, what, what you say, brother? Saturday. It's Saturday. Saturday. We've been, if you, 
We've been taught it was Sunday. I thought it used to be Sunday. But when you look on your phone, Sunday is the first day of the week. Saturday is the seventh day of the week. That's where seven day of vengeance get they uh, keep, uh Wednesday on Saturday from. That's right. See that? You see what I'm saying? So actually Saturday is the day of rest. You know you got Chick-fil-A, they closed down on Sunday. They supposed to be closing down today. This is the real day of rest. And he said, keep going, wait, 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 wait. Verse nine. Six days shot. You want me to start at verse eight? Verse 8, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thy labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Right, so the, the, the God, he basically saying that the Sabbath day is a day of rest. It's a day that we're not supposed to do no work. It's the day we're not supposed to, give me Nehemiah 10 and 31, are you there? It's the day we're not supposed to work, so we have jobs, we're supposed to not work on the Sabbath day. You know how all these, these, all these businesses open, yeah. they're making money on the Sabbath, they're supposed to be shut down right now. Oh, yeah. if, if this a God-fearing country, ain't God we trust, if they say they truly, beloved, if they truly believe in God, they're supposed to be closed down right now. Oh, yeah. But they got people buying and selling on the Sabbath day, breaking God's uh, commandments. Nehemiah 10 and 31. Bring it out. And if the people of the land bring ware or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that he that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath or on the holy day, and that we would leave the seventh year and the execution of every day. Yes. Question. Yes. Go hear the word of the Lord. Right, so this is Nehemiah speaking. This is, this is Nehemiah. The, Nehemiah said that, hey, we ain't supposed to buy or sell on the Sabbath day. So this is, this is a very important day for the Lord. Because this is the day that he raised it from his creation. Right? You got, uh, the book of Exodus, chapter 31 and verse 13. Speak thou unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Sabbath ye shall keep, for it... Verily, my Sabbath ye shall keep it, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am the Lord thy God that's, that do and sanctify you. Right, so this is a special day for the Most High God, man. This is his day of rest. He when he, he rests on the seventh day. So he said, I'm gonna I'm give this day to my chosen people, but then the rest on the seventh day as well too, sister. So I, remember the Sabbath day, that's the day of rest. The, it start, real quick before you go, let me, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna show you when it start. Okay. Give me uh, Genesis 1 and 5. Cause a new day don't start at 12 o'clock like they told him. The book of Genesis, chapter 1 and verse 5. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Right, so the evening and the morning was the first day. Not at 12 o'clock at night. Ain't no new day at 12 o'clock at night like they tell us. A new day is when the sun goes down. <laughs> right, so when the sun go down Friday, that's when it's a new day. So that's when it's Saturday. So that's what the Bible said. You got six days to prepare for the Sabbath day. But when that seventh day comes, you got to chill out, relax, you know, and get into your, the word, call people and study. That's it's a day of rest. Right. You know what I'm saying? We, we, just, we always talk about as black people, we need a, we need a day of rest. I, I'm working three jobs, I'm tired. But the Lord giving us a day of rest, we got to right. take it. You know what I'm saying? So, y'all y'all finna go or you, you want? Okay, well, our, our information is on the flyer, sis. We have Zoom calls. Huh? Yeah, bring that, yeah. I see it. One last one. Last, last one. Okay. The book of Numbers, chapter 15 and verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. Right, so these, you see every brother out here, they got they got something at the bottom of their shirt. Yeah, Everybody yeah, always yeah, wonder yeah. what them things is on the bottom of their shirt. What them pillowcases, them things that on them pillows, they what people say. But these are actually called fringes, right. right? And Christ actually wore these on the bottom of his garment. Right. The woman grabbed the hand uh, uh, on his uh, yeah. friend, him and his garment. This is what he had on. Oh, okay. and he had them on because this is something that our, our God wanted us to do. Right. They call fringes. And we got a border of blue on them. Like every brother yeah. got a border of blue, maybe uh -huh. different blue, but it's a border of blue. Right. So why, I'm going to show you why we're wearing them real quick and let you go. Verse 39. 
and it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them and that you see not after your own heart and your own eyes after you wish to go a home. Right, so the reason why we wear them is they're supposed to be, they're supposed to help us remember the commandments. Right. So we, if we ever think about eating pork, we'll look down at these, because I can't do that. That's against God. If I ever think about breaking it, okay. it's a reminder, basically. Yeah. Like you have reminders on your phone. Uh -huh. These basically what these is reminders, okay. sis. Okay. You know, so hey, just remember, I know the brother, they like the brother, been, they like he know it. Like you've been, you've been hurt this before, brother. Oh, I, I can tell. But hey, man, hey, brother, keep. You a king, brother, and you a princess sister, man. Y'all ain't just no niggas. Y'all are God's chosen people. Don't let nobody tell y'all. Don't let nobody tell y'all y'all nothing. Don't, you know, have faith in the most high God. It may be seen like we go through certain things. It may feel like the Lord ain't dealing with us. It may feel like, you know, he hate us. But he trying us through that fire. Right? We getting tried through a fire right now as the people. He didn't, he didn't forsake us. He didn't forget about us. He love us. This is what we going through. We going through. You know what I'm saying? So we love y'all. Y'all be safe. Lord willing, we see y'all again, fam. Oh, praise, man. We love our people, man. Do what we out here for, man. We, we like uh, doctors out here coming to uh, heal our people out here. Right. Right. Christ didn't go to the people that already had it figured out or felt they had it figured out. He went to our people that needed to be healed. That needed to be, uh, uh, yeah, that was sick. Right. Do what we out here for. We out here to get the real proof. Right. You go to sick. You go to, you go to church down in the spirit. You go to lead church down in the spirit. Right. People come up here, our goal is for them to leave happy, like the That's sister right. said earlier. Bring right, it she out. said refreshed. Teach right. See what we're supposed to do, man. This medicine is this world right, right. here, man. Right? So Second Maccabees, chapter God, six and verse one. Spirit. Not long after this, the king sent an old man of Athens to compare the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers and not to live after the laws of God. Right. And to pollute also the temple in Jerusalem. And to call it the temple of Jupiter Olympias. And that in charism of Jupiter, the defender of strangers, as they did desire that dwelt in the in the place. Can I ask you a question? What's going on? What is your um come right here? What's your objective? What are you What are you speaking for? What you mean? Well, what is What's your motivation? Speak for our people. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna. Nah, I'm gonna show you why we out here. Cause we out here to do Christ's mission, right. the Paul mission. And I'm gonna right. show you what he was doing. The Book of Matthew, chapter 15 and verse 24. But he answered and said. I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right, so Christ, this red letter is not Christ's word. He said, I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So when Christ was on, when Christ was on the scene, he was going around healing, teaching that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But who was he doing that to? I'm going to show you. It's the same thing we're doing right here in 20, so-called 2024. We're preaching, the good, we're preaching the good news for our people. Matthew verse. If you read Matthew 5, Matthew chapter 10 and verse 5, the 12, the 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. Right, so this is Christ talking to his disciples. He's saying, Don't go into the way of the Gentiles, but what are you going to say? Go. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Say what? But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What, what, what are they supposed to do? And as he go preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right, keep going. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, right. raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. Right, so Christ told his disciples to go out to the lost sheep of the house of Israel right. and tell them to heal them, tell them the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And right, let them know what's going on. So that's what we're doing. He was what? Christ was a radical in his life. What do you mean by that? Well, he was austere. Well, all the, those um, Pharisees, the Jewish uh, hierarchy right. in the church, 
They didn't like what he was saying. What was he saying? Exactly what that is. Right. He was saying the gospel. Right. And they didn't like it. Right. I, and they tried to hush him up and he healed all these people. Now, do you believe Jesus is a black man? Was a black man? Hundred percent. Why? I'm going to show you why. Break it out. How can? What do you think he was? He was a dark. All right. Put it this way. Do you take any stock in that in near death experience? Nope. Why not? Wait, what was your question? Have I? Yeah, have you believe, you believe, in you believe. Like, like somebody that died. Somebody and they dies they and they get God and God and came back. back and gave him a head, a head to him. Like I seen Jesus. Put it this way, I talked to a guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, no. Nah. I talked to a guy online. Test it, test Yeah, um. Yeah, let, me ask, let me answer your question real quick. So you asked, you ask, why do we think Jesus is black? Yeah. Let me show you this. Let's start at Revelation 1 and 1. What do you mean? The thing is, I'm, so let, let, we should let, love let, everybody. I mean, hold on, hold on, we just stop let, talking about race. Let's bring this up the book of Revelations, yeah. chapter 1 and verse 1. The one. revelation of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, which Yahweh gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. So this is going into the revelation of Jesus Christ. You know, this is John going to reveal the true image of Jesus Christ. Because he actually seen him. Now you have some people say, well, nobody never seen him. We don't know what color he is. He's all colors. He's Middle Eastern. He's olive color. He had all these things. He's We're going to show you in the Bible what he was. Verse 11, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write it in a book and send it unto the seven churches, which are in Asia, unto Ephesus and unto Smyrna, unto Pergamos and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis and unto Philadelphia and unto Laodicea. 14. His head and his hands were white like wool. This is uh this is describing Jesus Christ right here. His his uh description. The Bible said his head and his hairs were white like wool. So who got woolly hair? Come on. And a lot of people have woolly hair. Like who? You. No, there's a lot of people with curly hair. No, woolly. We're talking about woolly. Sheep hair. <laughs> Nappy, afro textured hair. Out. Who is that? What is your evidence? It says in the Bible. This is in the Bible. You believe in the Bible? I don't take it all. I don't take it all. Well, we're going to keep reading on that. Yeah, we, I ain't. He was a dark skinned man. His head and his hands were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Yeah, red eyes, not blue eyes like this devil, right? Keep going. And his feet like unto fine brass. So the, the Bible is describing his feet, because John has seen his feet. He more than likely had sandals on. So you're like, man, his feet is, his feet is like brass. What's the color of brass? And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. As if they burned in a furnace. So, if you burn anything, what color does it turn? If you burnt that, that penny or you put it in a furnace, what color does that get? Okay, you just said that he was a dark man. Dark skin. Right. All right let me so what's the difference? What what's about. the difference with him being a so-called black man and a dark skin man? Oh. I mean, evidence either way. But I will tell you this. Right. I will tell you this. I talked to a guy who um, he had a third, he had a heart attack at 36, and um, it was from he'd wrestled in high school and played football, and he literally in six weeks was robbed. Down to 150 to wrestle from like 215 to play football. It took a toll on your body. He was in the he was in the operating room or the ER. And I'm listening to you. I can I can talk to this too. Um, The guy, he saw the light, and he saw the unbelievable light that was filled with love. And he felt totally at peace. And 
then you walk into all of a sudden to his left, you see the dark skinned man. Oh, okay. He's a dark skinned man, right? Dark okay. skinned man. Okay. He did not say Negro, he did not say African American. You don't got to, the Bible said it. Right. It feel like he kind of hurt. It feel like he kind of bothered you a little bit. Right. Well, is he, what, is he I'm saying, what I'm saying is this whole thing. What's the, what you yeah, talk to this, me about it? How you feel about it? This is all you're, you're fueling. You're fueling racism. How? What about your people? Right. What, my people. people. Yeah, your people. My people you can't, are your people. So you, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh -huh. oh, so you got the nerve to come up here and talk about racism after what your people did and still doing to this do day? That. I didn't do that. That's, that's why I got that. Isaiah 14, 21. Yeah. I already knew I it. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14 and verse 21. Prepare slaughter for his children. For the iniquity of their father. What? Prepare slaughter for the children of the iniquity of their father. This is in the Bible. The Bible said prepare slaughter for the iniquity of their forefather. Right? So you want to have to pay. You say you didn't do it, right? Well, we didn't do, we didn't, we didn't, some of our people didn't break the commandments, but we still got brought up here on slave ships. Right. Right? So the Bible said that you're going to, you're going to have to pay for what your forefathers did. Right. Your forefathers rape, ride, and murder us, brought us up here on slave ships, I'm took our identity. You have to pay for that. Yes, your forefathers, your ancestors. My forefathers George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, what that? They did it. Crackers. Some crackers. Some crackers. Right. Let's still wait for them. Why are you, you spreading like right? You just you said hate, you, you believe in the Bible. You hate white of course. Right. hundred percent. I, I I hate what Jesus hates. Give me give me Romans nine and thirteen. Right. I hate what Christ hates. Bring it up. I hate what Christ hates. Let's see. I hate what David said. What did Morgan Freeman say? The book of Romans, chapter nine and verse thirteen. As it is written, Jesus said, "I hate the book of Romans, chapter nine and verse thirteen. As it is written, Jacob have I loved." But Esau have I hated. Right, so Jacob is the 12 tribes of Israel. He said he loves Jacob and he hates Esau. Right. Esau is the so-called white man. He, right. That's your forefather. I hate what my father hates. Right. I hate the people that hates me. Right. And I can that's tell right. throughout history who hates me. Right. And okay. I'm, I, hate, I pray for the people. Give, give me this. Do you believe in Jesus? Psalm 137, verse 7. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem who said, Raise it, raise, raise it. it, even the foundation thereof. Right. The Bible said, hold up. The Bible said, remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. This is this is David telling the most okay. high God to remember okay. the okay. people iniquities. Right. right? So you gotta pay what your forefathers did. If you hate anyone, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven. Book chapter the verse. Huh? Book chapter the verse. Read it. Where is it? I don't know where it is in the Bible, but I know that if you cannot you cannot leave this earth hating someone. Whether it's somebody close to you or anybody else, love your enemies. Love your enemies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody hits you. Give me, hold on, hold on. Turn the other Give me Leviticus 19 and 2. Who, who are the enemies? Who are your neighbors? Are you my Are you my neighbor? No, I'm your neighbor. They ain't yeah. You just said no. I don't live across the street. So are you my neighbor that the Bible speaks about when it says love your neighbor as you love yourself? Oh. Who's yeah. my neighbor? Are these brothers my neighbor or are you my neighbor? I'm, I like it. I mean, I, I don't, I don't hold it. The book of one, the book of Psalm, chapter one thirty nine, verse twenty. Do I not hate them, O oh Lord, that hate thee? Hold on, what did what did David say? Hold on, so they, I guess David not gonna get the kingdom of heaven. He hates though. Do I not hate them, O oh Lord, that hate thee? David said, I hate them that hate me. Right. So David, right, was he was a man after Why? the Most High God's heart. He said, I hate them that hate me. So David hated the people. He prayed against the people that hated him. Okay. So right. You're, so you're saying somebody like Jimmy Carter, who's that? Who's almost? It's the Book of Sirach, chapter, chapter. Oh, it's the Book of Sirach, chapter 11 and verse 10. Never trust thine enemy. What the Bible said? Never trust thine enemy. For as for like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. Though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him. And thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast white a looking glass, and thou shalt know that his rust have not.
being all together wiped away. Right, so the Bible said never trust our enemy. So we don't never trust the words of the so-called white man, that's right? A, that's a problem. So, and you, and you came up here, you were in a problem with the what? Bring it out, huh? That's, that's a problem I have with the Bible. Is that you'll be, if you look in there and find some verse, To who? That's to everyone. Oh, so he, so he, you gotta understand. Was, 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 did Jesus Christ? Just, did Jesus Christ is, walk in the flesh? Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. No, let me, let, ask, no, you let me ask you a question. Let so he was just a man that was just completely loved. Huh? So he was just a man, just completely loved. Give me Matthew 15 to 24. Start it. Start it. Start it. Start it to who? We just read in Matthew 25 who he was, who he was healing, who he cared for. You you agreed it was the Israelites. He was right. going around healing the Israelites, right? right. Well, he, of course, he was Jewish. So who is his people? Who he care? Who was he caring for? Who did he love? Who did he love? John chapter seventeen and verse nine. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. I know that you said he was going around healing and he loved everybody. He died for everybody. That's not in the Bible. Not. Why are you talking about the Bible? You don't even believe in the Bible. Say I didn't believe you don't if you don't believe in the whole thing you don't believe in it well, then you, you're, saying, you're saying that Jesus didn't love everybody that's what the Bible said right see you know that's what I'm saying you know what I'm saying man they wicked as hell man and get the wicked flee when no man pursue it man the wicked flee when no man pursue right. the wicked flee when no man pursues man and we're not we're not chasing this man we're not we're not i'm gonna kill you we, we ain't doing none of that the bible said the wicked flee when no man pursue it right but what he said about the righteous but the righteous are as bold as a lion the righteous are as bold as a lion we said ten toes we out here in the cold we out here in the hot we don't care about the temperature we don't care who it is we out here, man. And we're not finna flee. We're not finna pack up and leave because somebody feel like they know the Bible. Hey, like, like the brother Thad said, debate your cause. You believe in the Bible, you call yourself a Christian, and you think that we wrong for what we say, come and debate your cause. We're not gonna fight you. We're not gonna bite you. It's all love. Right? If you are people. You come up here talking about God love everybody, then you gotta get the sword, man. Bro, bro. That's that's can't hide, bro. Can't tell you. You already said that. Praise to the most high, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you give me, uh, can you give me, uh, Isaiah chapter 6? That's how you know. That's how you know. That Bible be the word. Don't say it. I said, it's okay. a tool. Yeah. You can't. You know, I don't work see tools. Yeah. 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 And the most high, you, and that's the most high using us to sharpen our sword up, man. He was just a, he was just, a, he was just like a little one of them little, them little test dummies that just be set. Yeah, he didn't know the Bible. He didn't know the Bible, so the Most High God sent him up there for us to get quick on the sword, right. us to use him and those in case somebody do come up and learn. Right, we didn't know how to work with him. Right, he wasn't talking about nothing, man. That's a punching bag. He was a punching bag. He was a human punching bag. That's all over the place. Yeah. 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 Yeah